What's up, guys? It's Sean and welcome back to the Eheng Podcast. And today we will answer a question from email. This is from Lo. Hi, Sean. Thanks for making all these videos on YouTube. Your videos have helped me a lot in understanding how the property market works in Malaysia. I have a problem now. It's kind of a rich man's problem. I am interested in a property now and I'm thinking about whether to pay for the house with a loan or with cash straight. My dad offered to help me pay for the house with cash which of course is good for both of us because then we don't need to go into debt and don't need to pay extra for interest and other fees but for the bad news it is very risky as it's quite a lot of capital just below a million with the loan it's a different story dad offered to pay a portion of the down payment but for the installment it will be me paying out of my own pocket i insisted on this then we can also decide afterwards whether or not to invest the money in something else. I am very confused now because I'm not sure whether is this the best solution for my case. My goal with the property now is to rent it out for a few years, eventually use it for my own stay when I come back later from Singapore. I am currently working there. What do you think? Wow, a rather direct one. Thank you, Lo, for reaching out. Um, so technically, it's a discussion between loan and cash well actually to this answer there's three portions lah, right so i think number one i will go for loan because it gives me more flexibility with what i use with the money so imagine if i were to take a 35 years loan and you say the cash that your dad is going to give you is below a million so let's assume it's eight hundred thousand. so if i were to buy a property that is a million for example then i take loan and now every month i will need to pay an installment amount of around three thousand eight to four thousand depending on what's the interest rate then compared to the 4,000 money payment right then having 800,000 in cash why don't put the 800,000 in the full flexi account to knock off the interest because I think we I have did this video before where, where a lot of people don't know the cost of financing so if you were to take a loan of 500,000 the interest for it will be 429 so it means in the end of 35 years we are paying out 929,000 ringgit so almost an entire amount of the property is actually interest across 35 years so that's the cost of financing and if you have the money which is the capital in your hands you can put into the housing loan to knock off the interest rate so the interest is actually calculated daily on the amount you owe to the bank so let's say the housing loan is 1 million but now you put in 800,000 right so basically you will save up a lot of interest because every single month the installment payment to the bank consists of two things one is the principal one is the interest and for the first six years right this interest portion is very high which is around 90 percent 88 percent somewhere there so by putting up the capital within the housing loan then you can actually save up on this a lot so it will reduce the tenure of the loan amount at the same time in case any opportunity arises or any emergency touch wood any emergency happen right you can still withdraw out the money from the housing loan and use it because ultimately property has this disadvantage of being illiquid means if you cash buy the property let's say 800,000 you buy a property it takes six to eight months for you to get ownership then let's say when you get 800,000 something happen within two to three years time this is when your market correction is still not there because you are buying the latest price so you put in all the cost of acquisition right if you were to sell at market price you won't make much then you are and property is one thing it's not like when you want to sell it immediately got buyer unless you sell below market rate then if you want to refinance also cannot because you don't have equity built within the property just yet so that's the problem also you cannot fractionally sell the property it's like can i just sell the toilet or can i just sell my living room out you can't and that's a debate always between stock investment versus property investment they can sell a fraction of the stock but you cannot do that for property so when you have the money getting a loan still because you can afford to you are very young and you are working in singapore after the forest conversion right your salary will be very high you can actually qualify for a very high amount of loan then use the capital from your dad to put the money inside to knock off interest that would be my first suggestion the second suggestion then i assume this is supposedly to be an investment product and that's my worry when i read your email when you say it's a uh, how that just in case when I want to come back and stay 
right don't a house to for just in case purposes right or a house for weekends or for a house for holiday or a holiday home right it's a very luxurious concept and that's something that you don't need right now especially when you are hustling down south in singapore what i will encourage is to purposely acquire a property based on it, the intention of investment look into a property for example apartment in mong Kera where when you acquire 800,000 as long as the rent can cover the installment then you can go ahead with it really and part of the best thing about having capital is you get to afford to venture into the sub sale market because there's actually four channels of acquisition number one is directly from developer number two sub sale market where you directly buy from owner within the secondary market number three auction market number four bulk purchase because you have a lot of capital or, or 800,000 in capital you get to play the sub sale market where a lot of people don't get to play so if you were to buy a property that is let's say around 800,000 you need to pay upfront around 18% which is yeah so it's around 144,000 up front just to own it then you include renovation maybe 50 to 80 thousand right so it's around 224 thousand just to own the property but by buying a sub sale property that gives you absolute certainty you know exactly what's the rental rate you exactly know what's the neighboring selling price you exactly know what's the condition of the property who's living within who lives around that area how's the situation like or the market like within that area you know everything before you decide whether you want to buy or not that makes the investment decision very very safe and not many can afford to play within that range a lot of youngsters now they all go for new properties why because zero upfront or minimal upfront they have absolute beautiful credibility to afford but they just have cash but now with pharma foundation you can and use that to your advantage to get older one where you can start setting your own standard of investment okay anything above 5.5 percent roi only i will buy it means that as long as the total rent for 12 months divided by the property selling price is around 5.5 to 6 percent then i will buy then going back to point number one right not necessarily you use the cash to fully own a property why tie yourself to only one why not tie to several right first use the 90 percent get one renovate it rent it out six months later use the bank statement use the tenancy stamp agreement use the proof of ownership to the bank and start looking for property number two and within the same game repeat the same standard maybe 5.5 is okay or you want higher seven percent or six percent a bit hard but they still out there again use the cash to your advantage furnish it up and let's go again then until the third one then because you can only qualify for 70 percent loan that's where it gets capital intensive but i think 800,000 is good for two to three properties now the limitation then will be your income but i guess if you are working in singapore uh, it should be fine it should be fine so the second way is actually a different method to use up the capital compared to the first one and the third point right this is then i don't know i just assume right this is somewhat like a legacy by your dad to somewhat help you own a landed home a home for you to get married then you settle here he may not be very very happy for you to go multiple units for investment like i just suggested i don't know right this is just assuming this is just assumption on my side there's also a different side to things where like, like i felt like if you don't use his money then he won't actually give you the money so the only way to take his money is to acquire property in full amount by cash hmm so i don't know so there is no right no wrong because if he, your father obviously is a millionaire by now so maybe this, this, this money is only one tenth or just a small fraction of his wealth you use it to buy a property if he's okay with it just buy lah, right if you can fully own a property there's nothing wrong with just using the cash and buy a landed property rent it out four years later come back and use it he happy you happy everybody happy because like you say this is a rich man's problem because it's an absolute different consideration when I got no money I'm trying to leverage this leverage this time this correctly so I get to build equity so I can refinance later for my next property no you don't have such problem it's just like if I don't put the money into property right 
I don't know what to do with it. It's just sitting in my FD or it's sitting in my EBF. Nothing to do also. And here I will suggest you to go study up or go learn up the different types of financing or different types of interest rates within the market. What's floating rate? What's fixed rate? So what's the difference between higher purchase? What's the difference between housing loan interest? Because if you were to really understand the logic, right? To fully own a property by cash is not a very, very wise move actually because as I mentioned just now, point number one, right? Yes, although 35 years later, a 500,000 property, including the financing cost, is actually 929,000. But if you were to tie back to data for the past decade in Malaysia, the average increment for property price is around 4.3 4 to 4.5% on average, yeah? Aggregate for average for the past decade. This one you can always find sources online. And you also got to include inflation to the picture. So a 424,000, although it's paid as interest, at the same time, what's the true value of 424,000 35 years from now? Because now we might see like, oh, 400,000, a lot of money there, brother, right? But maybe 35 years later, it's not really the case anymore. At the same time, so this is when we don't have money, so it's not like we get to decide, I don't want to pay interest, right? The only way I can own a property is by loan. So too bad. But if you now have an option, like option number one, you can put in the money to knock off the interest within the property, housing loan, or you just continue the loan like everyone else, you buy the property and you serve the housing installment. Then this amount of money, or just put it in FD, or I just buy some blue chips, or I just buy stocks that generate healthy dividends every year. So then what's the comparison within? The only question to that then will be your debt. <laughs> When, because like, hey son, you go and take my money, go and buy a house. Say suddenly, hey daddy, I don't want to buy a house. I want to buy several. No. Okay. I will just buy a house, but I don't want to use your money for the house. I want to use your money. Give me as cash and I put in the FD first or I put into the housing loan. No. Then whatever discussion, also no point. But based on the email, I think he is trying to encourage you to have such investment conversations with yourself already. And I think that's, a good debt and that's something that I would absolutely do with my son in the future. So okay, this is 300,000, tell me what you're going to do with it. Wow, interesting. Like. So show me the proposal of how you're going to do it, why you want to do it. Is it based on your short term goal or your middle term goal or your long term goal? Show me everything. Then he is actually trying to force, no, trying to teach you a better word. I'm trying to teach you how to start investing and thinking about money while you are being in Singapore because eventually all the wealth will be passed down to you and the worst thing is and when he do something like that you have no knowledge no awareness of how difficult it is to gather all this wealth so i think that's the point of this entire exercise your dad is doing with you but i'm very very grateful that you wrote in this email it means that you are taking this very very seriously and i would like to congratulate you so here mindset wise you are already different and in conclusion i think this is a rather direct one technically it's only three ways one buy a property then place the cash into the housing loan to knock off the interest right save the interest second way is to get multiple property within a sub sale market where's way more capital intensive but since you got capital you get to play that game it gives you absolute certainty only when you like the property only when the property makes five to six percent roi only you buy nothing can catch you by surprise anymore because everything is calculated everything is certain yeah second option third option then will be a study between different different kind of assets where I buy a property where the rent can cover installment but daddy can I still have the capital so I can put into shares or I can put into whatever that I'm interested in so you can start studying the difference the worst thing is to get yourself into businesses that you are not familiar with hey when your friend starts knowing that you got money hey we want to open a bubble tea shop uh, oh, I got a new project. Hey, you want to invest in my new project? And we'll do car detailing, a buddy, like Alex, all do it together. I just need money. So these kind of things then is not really my cup of tea because it's not so much on looking down on my friends or your friends, but these are processes where I don't get to even acquire the learning curve from that mistake. If I were to lose money on stocks, right, I will know why I lose. It's either I'm gambling, lah 
I didn't do enough research la, or I was greedy la, then I learn as I go about or I put this money into my own venture so I start a business with it I start selling flowers online or I selling cardboards online whatever la. I start building e-commerce store do everything then the business fail although I put in 50,000 and the business fail I learn why I fail so indirectly I use the money in exchange for the learning curve and the lesson so that will make me wiser and for the remaining capital I know exactly what to do already so I grow as a person in terms of money knowledge as well not like just give somebody else oh he lose everything oh yeah bad luck lor. that would be the worst way to actually lose money and I guess that's all for this episode thank you very much Lo for sending in this email say hi to your dad for me I really do hope that a lot of father a lot of mother will start looking into this clip and start thinking about how do we transfer the wealth knowledge into our children in the future yeah i think that's going to be very very interesting and for those who still have any questions regarding real estate do just email me at t-a-n-i-h-e-r-n-g t-a-n-i-h-e-r-n-g at gmail.com or you can just dm me on instagram i-h-e-r-n-g and i'll see you guys on the next one ciao